Well, we've done it. Job done, everyone. You can just leave YouTube. There's nothing else to explore because we have found the single best dirt cheap, extra large, big ass four wheel drive SUV on the market. I present to you the 1999 GMC Suburban. This is it. This is the peak. This is as good as it gets. We've owned this vehicle for exactly one day and I'm sold. $4,000. That's how much we paid for this Suburban. Now, of course, I'm sure someone in the comments is gonna be like, oh, I could have gotten that for a Jolly Rancher and the piece of string. But in 2022, the used car, truck, and SUV mark, I mean, it's, it's on fire. This is a terrible time to be buying anything used. And you know, you used to be able to buy a running and driving vehicle for a thousand bucks. And now you're gonna struggle to do that for 2,500 or $3,000. So four grand is about as cheap as it gets for a relatively rust-free running and driving four wheel drive. And not only is this a relatively rust-free running and driving four wheel drive, it's one of the best. Now this era of full-size GM truck, and I do mean truck because the Suburban and the C and K series pickup were, I mean, they're, their their cousins they're they're directly related this era of gm full-size vehicle was called the gmt 400 and they built the suburbans from i think model years 1992 through 1999 you can scream at me in the comments if i'm wrong about that but i'm pretty sure that's right this one's a 1999 and it has the base engine now these came with a 5.7 liter v8 and, and when it comes to americana right iconic symbols of america you've got apple pie, you've got the bald eagle, you've got Guy Fieri, and you've got the, the small block Chevy. This is as American as it gets. And I truly do believe the small block Chevy is one of the best engines ever made. And I know like there's a lot of great engines from Pagani and Lamborghini and all these exotic makers, but think about the number of miles completed successfully and trouble free with a small block Chevy. 5.7 liters, 350 cubic inches, this is not an LS, right? Those came later. This is the, the very last of the small block Gen 1 Chevy. This was called the L31. I don't know, horsepower rating. I just emissions choked, low compression, 200 and something horsepower, right? It's not a very high performance engine in terms of numbers, but they just simply go and go and go. You got a basic fuel injection system. Everything is easy to access. Everything is very simple to service. It's just wonderful, right? I mean, it's it's America under the hood. Now, if you didn't want the simple small block Chevy, there were a couple of other options. So in the suburban of this generation, there were kind of two models. There was the 1500 and then the 2500. Now, if you got the heavy duty, you could get this with a, uh, uh, a 454. So like over seven liters worth of freedom. Um, and that was a very cool engine too. Uh, very unfuel efficient, but also long lived. And then uh, you could also get these with the... Um, Diesel, I think it was a 6.5 liter turbo diesel, uh, and that was the other option. But the vast majority of them you see online are going to have the 350 V8. I, I don't expect EcoBoost levels of performance, but they just go. All right, here we go in the sub in the suburban. Let's see what it. There we go. The saggy door hinges are actually a monster pain in the butt. But let's see what this thing drives like. I'll turn the fan down so you can hear me a little bit. Now, okay, I promise I'm not being paid off by 1990s General Motors. There is no paycheck coming in from whoever was the head of GM in the 1990s. I just genuinely love this GMT era of uh, trucks and SUVs. It's fantastic, and here's why they're fantastic, right? I mean, this was an American vehicle designed by Americans for Americans. And they know that all we do in America is sit down here with our hand on the bottom of the steering wheel and drive straight for hours and hours and hours on end. I can seriously drive a thousand miles east from here in Colorado, go through Kansas and not approach any turns. I mean, there's no Nürburgring between here and St. Louis. It's just, it's straight for hours and hours and hours. And this is one of the most comfortable SUVs of the modern era. It's just, it's squishy. Everything about it's squishy. The seats are squishy, the suspension's squishy, the steering is squishy. This is some of the most over-boosted steering ever. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous how light it is. And no, it has no feel. And yes, this thing handles like an absolute pig, but who cares? 
who's driving their SUVs around a racetrack? That's the issue with modern uh, trucks and, and crossovers. It's like, oh, well, it's, uh, it's good at tackling Laguna Seca. No one's ever taken this on Laguna Seca. All they've done with this is 209,000 miles of some fat bloke sitting here and driving straight. That's what we do, and that's what these GMT trucks excel at. So this is probably one of the most confusing parts about this vehicle, Suburban. Now the name Suburban goes back to 1935. It's an iconic American nameplate, but the weird part is not the Suburban. The weird part is the GMC. You see, nowadays you've got the Chevy Tahoe and the Chevy Suburban, and then you've got the GMC Yukon and the GMC Yukon XL. But back in this generation of vehicle, you had the Chevy and the GMC Suburban which I just think is a little bit ridiculous from a branding standpoint. Now, there are some differences, which we can talk about between the Chevy and the GMC Suburbans, but I think a lot of it was down to brand loyalty. I mean, it's still a big deal today, and it certainly was a really big deal back in the day where people had their trusted, loyal local dealers. One of them may have been a Chevy dealer. One of them may have been a GMC guy. You had Chevy guys, you had GMC guys, and really the, the fact that they're virtually the same didn't matter. You had families that wanted that Chevy bow tie, and you had other families that wanted those three little red letters across the hood. Now there were visual differences between the two. The primary visual difference from the front at least was the grille and headlight treatment. Both had these stacked rectangular headlights, but the grille was pretty different. So the Chevy had the bow tie, of course, and then a crossbar that went through the middle of the grille, whereas the GMC had more of this egg crate style with the big branding there in the middle, and then of course body color molding around the outside. I actually I kind of think that the Chevys look a little better than the GMCs, but it really doesn't matter. And if, if you were so inclined, you can convert a GMC into a Chevy super easily. Now the rest of the driveline in the Suburban, well, okay, let's, let's talk about the transmission. This is called the 4L60. It's an automatic transmission, four speed. Now the reliability in this transmission, I don't know. I'll let you dive into the Reddit sub forums because there's people that are like, oh, mine died after 19 miles of pure flat highway use. And there's other people that are like, oh, mine lasted 350,000 miles and I only ran olive oil in it. Like it's just all over the board on the reliability of the transmission. But this one has held up quite well. So 209,876 miles, engine fires right up. We got good oil pressure and the transmission is buttery smooth. So this one has lasted quite nicely over the years. Now, in regards to the rest of the driveline, you can get them with two wheel drive, you can get them with four wheel drive. This one is the four wheel drive model and it's push button four wheel drive actually. So you got two high, four high and four low. And even back in the 1990s, you can get four wheel drive auto. So push that in, you can run it in theory all year round. In practice, probably better to go between two high and four wheel drive high. Now what we have here is an interesting mix of like pickup truck stuff and SUV luxury. So the pickup truck stuff, the steering wheel, the gauges, and of course the column shifter. The steering wheel has held up beautifully even after over 200,000 hard miles. Leather wrapped and I, I kind of like the design. Now this is a 99 so we do have full airbag with of course a sensor mounted horn and the four spoke design it just kind of stares at you. It's a big wheel. Um, it protrudes out of the dash like a spider web that looks like it's going to grab your face. But like the steering wheel a lot and it's perfect thickness with a little ribbing around the back. Now speaking of the column shift, very truck-like. So you got park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then you have selections for three, two, and one, and drive is really what they call an overdrive. And then the gauges are, I mean, they're straight work-oriented gauges, right? So you've got a giant tack and a really in-your-face manometer, but then you also have gauges for not only fuel, but a voltage meter, which is nice, not just a dummy light, oil pressure, as well as temperature, all clearly laid out, very easy to use. These also are daytime running lights, and I don't know why they had to do this, but um, they gave you a light to let you know your daytime running lights were on. That was just a thing they did back in the day, but this is all very truck-like. It's also, uh, it's nice to have this much data when you're towing, when you're hauling, when you're pulling your horse trailer, it's great to have. The center stack in the GMC Suburban is very no nonsense, but you do have some nice features. So this is like your factory uh, tape deck, right? Delco Electronics, pretty cool. Now you do have, of course, uh, presets, six presets for your radio. You have both volume and two knobs, which is something that needs to make a comeback in every new vehicle. A tape deck is nice, by the way, in 2022, because you can run an adapter to play music on your phone, which is good. And then you have controls for like your fade, your balance. You've got bass and treble controls as well, all integrated into the center stack. Now below that very simple set of climate controls, no nonsense. You got your fan speed, you've got temperature and then direction, buttons for AC and then defrost. And below that we do have uh, this, which was probably quite a nice option in the 1990s. 
this was the uh, disc changer, right? Your, your CD changer. Now this whole layout will change depending on the year. This is the facelift model. A lot of people like the earlier 90s Suburbans that were more squared off and chunky. They look a little bit more vintage. But if you're looking at this vehicle for a daily driver, it's nice to have dual airbags, which you only got with this updated dashboard. Very no nonsense air vents in the Suburban. Now, uh, this is kind of funny. The center mounted air vents in the middle, they only point toward the driver and you have two of them. So you can kind of get perfect perfectly acquainted with the airflow. But the best air vent is not the middle one, it's the crotch air vent. This was an amazing invention, which just was the, the best idea. Right underneath the steering column, you had an adjustable air vent. Well, I mean, the only purpose there is to cool the family jewels, and that's, that's pretty much why it's there. Now underneath the dashboard, you have a cigarette lighter, which potentially you could use for power, or you have a power outlet, which potentially you could use for power, or you have another power outlet, which potentially you could use for power. Three potential power outlets in a three inch radius. The other thing about the GM trucks of this era is that they are remarkably solid. Even when they're a little bit worn out like this one, maybe a little bit clapped, they are surprisingly well screwed together and surprisingly refined. Like this one is not obviously a very clean example, but 210,000 miles, pretty much everything works. There's no major squeaks or rattles. There's no weird thunks or groans. It just just goes down the road with a kind of a heft to it, which is missing in some of the modern SUVs. Now, it took me a long time to figure out the purpose of this tray in the center console. At first, I thought it was like a cheeseburger launcher where you could just go launching cheeseburgers at your radio. But I think the purpose is when you flip it up, if you take a look on this side, you've got a little clip and you could take like notes here. It's like a little notepad. That's stupid. That's never been used, guaranteed. These old GM trucks had these really, um, what's the word? I'm gonna go with Fisher Price light -like window switches. They like, they look like they're made for three-year-olds. They're just big and chunky. And I love the sound that these trucks make when you lock the doors. Oh, oh I heard your G-Wagon's got a good quality lock. Listen to this. <laughs> now in front of that, you've got a switch called lock and norm. Uh, lock, of course, is your lockout for the rear windows and norm. I don't know why would they why would they have that? Why not an unlock? What norm? You got normal and lock. The mirror control in the GMC Suburban is this alien looking toggle. You've got like this little directional and then you push in to adjust the power mirrors. But my favorite feature is just in front of that, the knee speaker. You've heard of tweeters on the dash, but what about tweeter speakers for your knee? Now the interior on this one is pretty gross. Like like oh, just don't film that. That's horrible. Um, but even still, you know, even 23 years later, it is one of the most comfortable interiors I have ever been in. And I've been very fortunate to go into the interiors of like $300,000 Mercedes and Bentleys, but these seats, the way that 1990s General Motors engineers could design a seat to be so comfortable yet fairly supportive with a lot of room is truly incredible. Now they do have a tendency to kind of tear over time and that certainly has been the case in this model. But like, check this out, you got power seats with heat in this model. So three position heated seats off one and two. And it's just a great place to spend time. Cat chairs in the front, put down the armrest. You got one arm on the armrest, one arm out the window and you can cruise for miles and miles and miles. Here in the mirror, we have two different settings for this little computer. You've got a compass and you've got a temperature. And that's what that displays. Now above that are your climate controls for the rear passengers. And above that, I like these. These are like, these remind me of flying on like a 1990s 737. These are little overhead lights, little map lights, and you can aim them around in every direction. And behind those, we've got Homelink, pretty advanced stuff. We also have a sunglass holder. And this, I think this is only for one purpose. If I'm not mistaken, that is a CD holder. That, Pretty sure that's what went in there. There you have it. Now don't think that the front seat passengers have all the fun when it comes to comfort. The rear seat comfort, it's just as good. Big, comfy bench seat. Now your, your, your knees do end up sitting a little bit higher than I'd like, but it still is a great place to hang out and spend time. Down here, we've got two fold out cup holders. And above that, you've got your controls for your rear seat climate if you, uh, if you want to kind of change your temp yourself with big vents up here in the ceiling. Now, of course, you also have these nets in the backs of the front seats, and these are great for failing. Pretty much every truck of this era I've seen has saggy nets. And I know you were concerned, but don't worry, you have a place so your kids can smoke back here as well. That was, that was nice and thought out. Let's check out the easy entry for the third row. Push down, pull seat forward, 
Oh yeah, that is pretty easy entry actually. And let's check out the third row. Now, ooh, it's spacious. Oh, I love this. This is fantastic. You've got what, two seat belts back here? Three, holy cow. So we've got two, three, and three. This is a proper eight seater. Ooh, this is a great place actually to uh, hang out and chill. Now a couple of things back here. Underneath this panel, lift that up, and that is where your jack lives. So your uh, third row babies have access to your tire change jack, and I know, I know you're stressed out, but don't worry. Even the babies in the third row can smoke. They've got their own private little ashtray back here as well. Now to fold the seats in the Suburban, what you first do is lift up on this handle and fold up on the cushion, and then you can fold the seat bottom down, and that goes like that. But but then of course you'd have this big gap where the third row feet go. They actually thought about that. They gave you this little bridge that, that'll slot down there. And then you got the nice flat floor for when you're loading bigger items into the back of the Suburban. So these Suburbans had barn doors, which I think is pretty fun. Now you could open just one if you wanted access to just part of the cargo bay, or if you're going for the full enchilada, you can open up both, but lots and lots of, uh, wide and long loads can fit in the back of a GMT 400 Suburban. Now one cool feature you may or may not have known about these old Chevrolets, you could actually find not only the VIN number in the glove box, but these little three character alphanumeric codes. And these all stood for various options and uh, features that your Suburban had. But the most important one that I'm most interested in is actually this one. That says G80, and if I if I recall, that means that this Suburban should have an auto-locking rear diff. Now let's talk about that engine and that performance. This is a, a monstrously lazy V8 in terms of power. 90% of the pedal does absolutely nothing, and then you got 10% where all hell breaks loose. But like, when you put your foot into it, I mean it goes, and then finally 3,000 RPM comes along, and you are shooting toward a fence. Uh, but I, it's not a it's not a performance machine. Let's be completely transparent about that. Now I do truly love these things. We had that white uh, K 1500, and I felt the same way about it. I mean, they're just well made, simple, durable, long lasting, comfortable vehicles. Now, of course, you're probably thinking that's ridiculous. Like a 1999 Land Cruiser is obviously going to be much more reliable, and you're probably right. It will be more reliable. But the difference is, a good 99 Land Cruiser is going to be 25 grand in this market, whereas a good Suburban, it's gonna be five grand, right? Like you can get five of these for the price of a somewhat pretty good Land Cruiser. And I think if you just want a big vehicle to tow your boat, to take your kids to school, to do a little bit of off-roading, parts are everywhere. Every auto parts store has what you need for these. Every junkyard has a few of these in them and they just last a long time. Fantastic, fantastic used cheap four-wheel drives. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. As always, this has been Tommy with TFL Classics. Check out TFL Classics. Um, for all the latest and greatest and affordable and fun and cheap and used four-wheel drives, because that's what we do here.